Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome to the video. I hope everybody's day is going great. Mine's going pretty okay. We've had a, a interesting one, an interesting night. Definitely some things unfolded yesterday that were really unfortunate that had to do with effect, which we are going to cover that whole situation first. Then after, obviously, you know, there was some backlash to me live streaming and translating what effect was saying. And I will give, you know, my thoughts and response to that whole situation. I understand some people are pretty upset with me. And, you know, I can understand why a little bit, but hopefully everybody can understand my perspective as well. So we'll get into that more at the end of the video. But first, I do want to cover effect situation, make that the number one priority. And let's just go ahead and get into it, guys. All right. So I'm sure most of you guys know what happened yesterday. If not, let me just explain it real quick. Effect turned his stream on and he pretty much broke down. It was really sad. It started off mainly about like Overwatch and just how he didn't want to play anymore. But then it turned like pretty dark. He started talking about his girlfriend and it went downhill from there and it got really sad. So let's just go ahead and look at a rough translation here that somebody posted on Reddit. Effect thinks he can't be a pro any longer or someone in the spotlight. He pretended to be okay, but it's piling up now. He thought about what was making things so hard on him and came to the conclusion that it was a burden slash responsibility of being a pro. He could try not to let it get to him, but that's unfortunately not his personality. He's just not a person who can get over things very easily. He was pretending not to notice that he was breaking down, but he can't anymore. He feels really bad when he starts missing shots, even when he knows his aim is good. Because of this, when he tries to play, he can only go for about two to three hours before turning the game off but he can't take not playing slash practicing either. And because of his personality, he feels like he can't really talk to anybody about this. He doesn't get along with his family, and although some of his closest friends know, he doesn't want to cause trouble for them. He's not good at talking face to face, but feels like he can talk about it on stream. He then starts to talk about uh, hate that he gets on social media. He said he can't ignore the comments he gets on things like his YouTube. He had confidence before, so he would just laugh at the hate comments, but not anymore. Each one gets to him, he doesn't know why he's gotten so weak. He's been debating for months whether to talk about this because it would become a big deal, but he feels like he has no choice but to talk about it to feel better. He said he's a bit of a sociopath, which negatively affected his relationships growing up. He definitely has close friends, but that only happened because they were nice and accepted him even though he was a bad person. He would write a lot of angry comments and retaliation whenever he was offended. He fixed a lot of it while growing up, but people don't change easily. When he first started streaming, he tried too hard to change and be a positive player. He encouraged teammates and tried his best not to tilt. But look at me now, his negative personality came back. He knows himself well, so he made sure not to get close to people because he knows his terrible personality. He fought with his parents and played games all day. He became a pro through skill and not because he was a good teammate. You see all the criticism, Effect is toxic, Effect isn't a good teammate, he says they are all right. He knows that himself the best, so he can't say anything back. It would be better if he didn't realize this, but he knows, and he can't fix it, he doesn't know why, even when he takes medication, it doesn't fix the problem. Even if he goes back to the Dallas field, he'll only cause trouble and probably won't be able to return to his previous form. When he remembers back to when he would yell and scream at his teammates, he feels so sorry he wants to die. Just because they lost a game, he was so horrible to them, ruining the mood, he shouldn't be playing team games. He then talks a lot about the whole situation with Seneca, his ex-girlfriend, not going to translate all of this as it isn't related to Effect's pro career and gets a bit intense and personal. But the gist is he broke up with her, she mainly just wants to have fun and isn't thinking about the future, well he can't see himself supporting them when his short career as a pro ends. She broke down a bit and didn't take it well. In frustration, he threatens to air out the dirty laundry if she keeps this up. She gets so scared that she attempts suicide and ends up in the hospital. Effect apologized profusely to her because he knew he shouldn't have threatened her. This whole experience really messes with effect. They got back again, but they fought every day. They broke up again, this time for good. He has thought about suicide before, even put a knife to his wrist, but then he got too scared. He couldn't find a solution to his problems, but he was too scared to die. He feels better now that he's talked about it on stream, ends off by saying he might try to return if he ever recovers from the situation and gets his mental condition under control, but he thinks that day probably won't come. And that is the full rough translation there, guys. I know it's pretty deep. It's pretty sad. Um, it started off not so bad just talking about the Overwatch League and how he really doesn't know if he can continue to be a pro because it's such a burden on him. But then after when he started talking about his girlfriend and just more personal things, it got really sad and you couldn't help but just like feel really bad for the guy. 
And, like, the saddest thing is he does say, like, he doesn't have any family he could talk to and he does have friends, but he doesn't want to involve them in his problems, which honestly, I'm sure his friends would be more than happy because the way he explains them in this video seems they're very caring. And also, big shout out to OGE because the entire time like this was going on in the stream, OGE was in the chat trying to cheer him up, telling him like that's talk, saying things like, oh, you might not be happy with how you acted on the team, but like it's fine. Like we know you're a good guy. You know you're a good guy. Let's just talk. Telling him if he doesn't want to be a pro anymore, that's fine. He still wants to be his friend. He still respects him. Just a whole bunch of like warming messages to him. And I do feel like that kind of helped affect a little bit, but... As he said, he kind of just needed to like get this out of him. And honestly, I kind of agree, you know, with him going on stream and doing this because sometimes you just have to let it out, man. You can't bottle things up and hold it inside because the longer you do that, the worse it gets. If you let it out, maybe you'll feel free. It'll feel like you lifted some weights off of your body. And my advice that I would offer to affect, he's probably never going to hear this, but like if anybody was in this situation, the advice I would offer is take a break, man. If you're this sad and you're this torn apart because of, you know, professional play and all that stuff. I know there's other things on top of it, but obviously Overwatch League and being a pro has a big deal of this. So I'd say you need to take a break, man, or just quit permanently. Pull it to Fran. And I, I don't know DeFran's situation that much, but it did seem like DeFran was pretty unhappy playing the game. Then he took a really long break. I don't know if he did some soul searching. I, I have no idea. But he took like a five to six month break. Then he came back to Overwatch, played the game that he loves, but just streamed it and played for fun. He didn't play professionally, so I think maybe uh, Effect should take this route as well and become a, a full-time streamer. Obviously not right now. Take a couple, maybe three, four months off and just do what you originally love doing, which is playing video games. It's what we all love to do. That's why we're all here. I honestly think that could be good for Effect or just like I said earlier, if anybody was in this situation, that would be like the best advice I can offer, man. Try to connect with your family again or something. You know, go talk to your friends. I'm sure they will help you. I do wish the best for Effect. He was a really amazing player. It's unfortunate, you know, that he was toxic. It, clearly, he does have some mental issues, and that is something that he or anybody else shouldn't frown upon. Just get some help. Try your best to look past it and work on it, and maybe one day you'll be happy. I am fortunate enough to not have any mental illness, and I do know people in real life that suffer from things like depression and other types of mental illnesses and it's not a good thing and it is a real thing i know a lot of people will say oh you know maybe he's just being a little girl stuff like that no guys like you don't understand if you don't have a mental illness you don't understand how it is so you got to respect that and that's pretty much it guys again i wish the best for effect i hope everything works out for him and he can figure out what he needs in life to make him happy and now let's go ahead and move on to the portion of this video where i guess i talk about what happened yesterday with me and the situation all right so i'll just start from the beginning and kind of explain how this all unfolded piece by piece so i was just you know gaming working on some videos and i got a bunch of messages like instantly at the same time on twitter and discord saying that Effect was live on his stream and he's talking about quitting Overwatch and he's crying. So my immediate reaction was like, oh really? What the hell? I got to go to his stream. I got to see what he's saying, right? I open his stream and it's in Korean. He's not speaking in English whatsoever. So I'm sitting here thinking like, wow, what is going on? What is he saying? Is he actually quitting? So then my second reaction, just like many others is what is he saying? I got to figure out what this guy is saying. So I turned my stream on and I reached out to pretty much all the translators who have been on my channel previously. And of course, the, the number one guy, the reliable guy who's always been on my channel is Koska. And he immediately responded. He knew what was going on. And I asked him, I said, hey, man, can you translate to us on stream and let everybody know what is he saying? So then here we were. I got Koska on Discord. I have, you know, my stream live. I'm basically just reading my chat not really keeping an eye on effects and we're just sitting there waiting for Koska to translate and I'd say maybe every 30 seconds to one minute Koska would tell us something that effect was saying and again it was very similar to the things that were read on that rough translation earlier I'm not going to show any clips of it because I deleted that video already because it seemed a lot of people were upset about it right away and you know I figured hey let's just get rid of it I'll talk about the situation tomorrow somebody else is going to do a translation anyways and as I said in my intro I can understand why some people would would be upset with me but then I also don't really understand some of their logic behind why they're actually upset with me because I'll be honest the people that are upset with me kind of seem to be the people that already hated me prior to this situation anyways so let's go back a little bit when effect turns his stream on and people start hearing you know he's quitting and he's crying about it your immediate reaction is to go watch it and figure out what's going on right but then when you see it and you don't know what he's saying your next reaction is 
I gotta figure out what he's saying, like, how do I translate this, right? And while I'm guessing almost every single Western person watching that stream had no idea what he was saying and had no access to any type of translator to figure out what he was saying, my reaction was, all right, I'm gonna get my translator to translate it for everybody so we know what he's saying. None of my thoughts were, oh, I, I can't wait to get my stream on and try to make money off of this situation. Not at all. I didn't think any of that. I turned my stream on as soon as possible so I can get attention to all my viewers to let them know what is going on and also try to reach out to a translator so we know what he's saying. And that's exactly what I did. Turned the stream on, got a translator live, and yeah. So what a lot of people are going to say is, oh, well, Michael, you should have respected effect and him saying that he didn't want anybody to translate this. Well, guys, you have to understand that I had the stream on and I had somebody translating it way before effect and his moderators in the chat started saying, oh, don't translate this to English way, way before that. I turned my stream on within the first two to three minutes when OGE was in the chat talking to him. There was no English moderators telling anybody not to translate anything. So that's the first thing I have to say about that. Then the second thing is, well, also, guys, you have to understand that this is going to get translated. Regardless if I stream it or not, somebody is going to post the translation on Twitter, Reddit, it, YouTube, wherever it be, it's going to get posted multiple times. And as we've seen, that did happen, even despite me already translating it as well. And that's the first thing that somebody would be mad at me for, you know, doing this whole thing, is translating it when he didn't want to translate it. Well, I I'm sorry I translated it. Honestly, like, I didn't know how deep it was going to go. I thought he was just going to be talking about the Overwatch League and how he's not playing anymore. I had no idea he was going to talk about, you know, his personal things with his girlfriend and like, I uh, seriously had, nobody had any idea it was going to go that deep, okay? And that's just my honest truth. And the second thing people would be mad at me for doing this thing is that I'm trying to profit, make money off of him, or, you know, just capitalize in any way possible. My response to that is, first of all, the stream was demonetized. Yes, there was a donation link in the description, but my description was set to that already because of my previous streams. It auto-saves your description. When you go live, it just, it's there. It's the same thing as when you go live on Twitch, your things at the bottom, they're there. I didn't think about changing it. I didn't look at it. I never asked for donations one time on the stream. People even donated through YouTube, which there is no way to turn that off, and I did not acknowledge any of the donations. And if you don't believe me about these auto-setting things, when I was streaming, it was literally set to Realm Royale. And then back to me trying to profit or capitalize off of this in any way, guys, I had 1,600 viewers at my peak. It sat around maybe 1,300 for 45 minutes. There was nothing for me to gain for this, guys. Like, there's, it's not like I'm a, a small YouTube channel with 1,000 subscribers and I had 1,600 viewers. Then I could possibly gain off of this. I'm a, I'm a channel with 55,000 subscribers and I get like 30,000 views on every single video I post every day. There's no way that I'm going to gain anything from 1,600 viewers on a stream that is demonetized. Yeah, somebody donated $10. Uh, sorry, like, you guys want me to donate $10? Do you want me to donate $50? Like, the point of that stream was not for me to capitalize and try to make money or gain viewers, gain followers. I've pretty much gained every follower that I could off of all the drama and Dallas Fuel crap that happened throughout the entire season. There's nothing for me to gain here. I don't know what people think I'm trying to gain. I was literally just trying to figure out what effect was saying and to share it to everybody else who wanted to know what he was saying as well. When one of the most popular players in the world on the most popular team in Overwatch, the game, our community that we all follow, says they are quitting and are crying on stream but are speaking another language, everybody wants to know what he's saying. And that's the thing, only like 2,000 people max were on my live stream and actually saw everything that happened. And probably those 2,000 people didn't stay for the whole thing. Maybe 1,000 did. So only 1,000 people know how the whole thing unfolded from my perspective and the stream's perspective. But there's thousands and thousands of people on Reddit and Twitter seeing these posts and tweets about me being a scumbag trying to make money off of effects situation and it's, it's actually hilarious because 99% of these people were not on the stream and don't know how it unfolded. They don't know that I was there before he asked not to translate. Just like most of these people don't know the full situation and because already half of them dislike me or maybe not even just, you know, don't care for me, they see that type of stuff and it makes them just dislike me and want to say things about me, which I understand. And honestly, I'm not making this video so I can try to like clear my name or protect myself. I just wanna, you know, shed light on the situation from my perspective so people that don't know what happened or how the event unfolded, they know. 
And that's kind of pretty much it. I guess the other thing people would say is, you know, that I'm clickbaiting or something. I don't know what type of like excuse that is to hate me for or like be upset. Like my stream was literally titled effect is quitting Overwatch League and crying on stream right now. Live translation. That was my stream title. I, because it's in all caps, it's clickbait. I, I don't really understand that, you know, like I wasn't really clickbaiting. Like literally I made the title what the situation was about so people would know what's going on and they can come figure it out. As for the thumbnail, that's a thumbnail I used like, I don't know, three months ago or something on a random video when Effect was basically done with the Dallas feel. It was on my desktop. I clicked browse for the thumbnail. I didn't want to have a Realm Rail thumbnail. So I just, I clicked whatever I had on my desktop that said Effect and that was the one that it happened to be. So you know, I mean, even uh, at the end of the day, like the thumbnail still wasn't even clickbait. Like it, it still made sense with the situation. I, I mean, I wasn't trying to profit off this situation. And if it seems like that, I guess it seems like that from your guys' perspective. But it just, it is what it is, man. I hope Effect gets uh, through this whole situation. I hope he, he finds in life what he needs to be happy. Hopefully he takes a break from Overwatch League because I think that's what he needs. And that's going to be the video, guys. Thank you for watching. I'm out of here. Peace.